Hi guys, welcome to Medicare. Sorry for the late upload, but in this first video, we are going to study about the functional organization of the cardiovascular system. As the name suggests, it is cardio and vascular system. Cardio means the heart and vascular system means the blood vessels. So in this chapter, we are going to be studying about the heart and the blood vessels. Let's study about them separately. First, the heart. Heart, we all know, it's a very important organ in our body. It is fourth chamber. It is the organ which pumps blood to all the organs of the body. Now, let's study about the functional organization of the heart. The heart is a fourth chamber. It's considered this piece of rectangle to be the heart and divided into four chambers. The upper two smaller chambers are the atrium and the lower two bigger chambers are the ventricles. On the corresponding sides, it is right atrium, left atrium, right ventricle and the left ventricle. Now, let's study the separations between them. Now, the right atrium and the left atrium are separated by interatrial septum. The right ventricle and the left ventricle are separated by interventricular septum. Correspondingly, the atriums and the ventricles are separated by atrioventricular septums. Now, let's study about the rhythmicity of the heart. We all know that the heart is rhythmic. How does it gain this rhythmicity? There are two bundles of nodal tissue, one situated at the upper right corner and one situated near the atrioventricular septum. The upper one is called the SA node, also called the pacemaker. The lower one is called the AV node, which is also called as secondary pacemaker because it comes to play when the primary pacemaker is disturbed. Now let's study about the blood vessels during the heart. So the deoxygenated blood from all the body parts enters the right atrium through the vena cava. And from the right atrium, it's dumped into the lung through pulmonary arteries. The oxygenated blood from the lungs comes into the left atrium through the pulmonary veins. And the oxygenated blood is supplied to all the body parts by aorta. This is about the blood vessels of the heart. Now, let's study about the pressure built in the ventricles during the systole. Systole is nothing but the contractory phase. So, as this is also called as the pulmonary circulation and the peripheral resistance in pulmonary circulation is way less than the systemic circulation, the pressure built is very less, that is about 25 mmHg. In contrast, the pressure built in the left ventricle is about 125 mmHg. That is like 5 times more than the, of the right ventricle. That is because of the increased peripheral resistance in systemic circulation. Now, let's study about the functional organization of blood vessels. Blood vessels normally are divided into three layers. Tunica externa, tunica media and tunica interna. If we consider this as the lumen of the blood vessels and these are the three layers. This is the tunica externa, the tunica media and this is the lumen and this is the tunica intima. Now, tunica externa contains E for E, it contains elastic tissues. Tunica media, M for M, contains of muscle fibers. Tunica intima consists of endothelial lining. This is about the functional anatomy or the organization of the blood vessels. Now let's go into the physiological classification of blood vessels. Physiologically, the blood vessels are divided into four types. First one is the wind kissel vessels. Second one is the resistance vessels. Third one is the capacitance vessels. And the fourth one is the exchange vessels. Now, let's study about them separately. First one is the wind kissel. Wind kissel, the name is from the effect known as wind kissel effect. I'll explain you the effect right now. Imagine this as the blood vessels. 
with blood. Now imagine there's an overload of blood and the blood vessels enlarge. This is huge amount of blood in this. Now, as soon as the blood drains out, it returns to the normal position. The recoiling effect is known as the Windkissel effect. Windkissel effect. Based on these property, the the vessels got its name. Now, for this to happen, there should be a lot of elastic tissues. So, the vessels which have a lot of elastic tissue will come under this criteria. So, the vessels which come under this criteria are large arteries and aorta. Okay. Now, let's study about the second category that is the resistance vessels. As we know, it is providing some resistance. So, it should have something which is tight and thicker. So, the thing which can fulfill this criteria is the muscular layer or the muscle layer. So, the arteries which have high muscle coat will fulfill this category and the vessels in this category are arterioles and metarterioles as they have a thick muscular coat. These resistance vessels are the major seat in peripheral resistance of the body. Next, let's study about the third category of vessels. These are exchange vessels. Exchange vessels. As the name suggests, they exchange something. For there to be any exchange, the layer between the vessels should be a thinner one. For this, the vessels should have only the endothelial layer and this criteria is fulfilled by capillaries. And these are also called as exchange vessels. Now coming to the final category that is the capacitance vessels. Capacitance is nothing but the capacity to hold. These are the vessels which can hold an extra amount of blood when it's necessary. And the vessels in this criteria are veins. Because normally 60% of the total blood is accommodated in veins, but they can accommodate even more. That's the reason these are called as capacitance vessels. This is about the physiological classification of blood vessels. Before ending this topic, I would like to explain you about the two types of circulation regarding this topic that is the pulmonary and the systemic circulation. Okay, for this let us draw the diagram of the heart. So this is the right atrium, right ventricle, left atrium and the left ventricle. Uh, we all know that the deoxygenated blood is drained into the right atrium by vena cava that is the DO2. Now this DO2 is drained into the lungs by pulmonary arteries. Now this deoxygenated blood is oxygenated, oxygenated and then it is drained into the left atrium by pulmonary veins. This circulation through the pulmonary artery to the lung and from the lung through the pulmonary vein into the left atrium is known as the pulmonary circulation. Now, let us check out the systemic circulation. As, it, as the name suggests, it is the systemic circulation or to all the body parts. We all know that the oxygenated blood is drained into the left atrium by the pulmonary veins. Now the oxygenated blood enters the left ventricle through the bicuspid valve. From the bicuspid valve it is transported through all the body parts 
all body parts through the aorta as we know there is tissue exchange and there is release of a lot of deoxygenated blood this deoxygenated blood is drained into the right atrium through vena cava the flow of blood from left ventricle to all the body parts through the aorta and the deoxygenated blood from all the body parts to the right atrium through the vena cava is known as a systemic circulation so that's all for today if you like this video please subscribe to my channel and support me thank you